company, you know, doing this? How do I know if they're any good? Ask them to look at a job they did 10 years ago. Most of them haven't been in business 10 years. If they've been in business 10 years, go back and look at the job that was done. Most of them you wouldn't want. Most landscapers crowd stuff in there, but now you're drawing your own plans. You learned how to do that last week, so we're not facing that, that problem. All you need somebody that can dig a hole, and so you can get out there and direct the work, so you're a lot better off. But man, beware of people that call themselves landscapers. Yes? When you're mulching, is it just mulch around it, or you drive around, you see the big like donut mounds, yeah. and I think it's you just have it flat, right? It doesn't make any difference, really. Let's, well, it's a good segue into talking about mulches. Mulches are, by definition, and somebody else had a question. Did I get your questions before we move on? Okay. Mulches, by definition, are things that are applied to the surface of the ground. What do mulches do? Mulches keep the soil cooler. Uh, Malcolm Beck did an experiment a few years ago. It was 100 degrees. He went out to where there was some soil in the sun, and he stuck a soil probe thermometer in. The soil was 145 degrees. The soil gets very hot. Anybody that's ever walked across the beach barefoot? Yeah, you know how hot that soil gets. Well, the soil out here in the sun was 145 degrees. Over here, also in the sun, he had a pile of mulch about three inches deep. Stuck the soil probe through the mulch and an inch into the soil. What do you think the temperature was? 100 degree air temperature? Soil temperature was 84. Now you tell me where the roots are happier, where the roots are happier at 84 or 145. So mulches do great things by insulating the soil. It would be the opposite in winter if we ever have winter again here. If the air temperature may be, you know, 14 degrees, underneath the mulch is probably going to be about 60. So mulches maintain an even soil temperature. Mulches cut down on evaporation, cut down on water loss. Mulches retard weed growth. And in the case of organic mulches, they slowly decompose and put nutrients back into the soil. I said organic mulches because they're, again, when I gave you a definition of mulch, it didn't say plant material, didn't say anything else. A mulch is something that goes on the surface of the soil. One of the most popular or one of the most widely marketed new mulches is made of ground up tires. Is it a good mulch? If you live in a cool climate, probably so. But you put a black surface, something out on the surface, and you go see how hot it gets. I'm not in favor of the you know black plastic mulches at all, like the tires. I'm all in favor of recycling tires, band them together, dump them in the Gulf of Mexico and improve fishing. I don't want them to cut up, put around my trees. Um, in the case of native plants, you do not want a mulch that holds an excessive amount of moisture in the soil. Native trees like mountain laurel, native wildflowers, like I'll use liatris as an example, you put an organic mulch there that holds a lot of moisture, you can have problems. The plants can stay too wet. Down at the botanical garden, there's a great native wildflower called liatris or gay feather. Comes up in the fall, it's a little spike with little orchid purple flowers all up and down. It's absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. They had a nice bed of, uh, of latris down there, but it never got any bigger. It just kind of sat there and grew and kind of existed, and they had some organic mulch around. They went back in and replaced that organic mulch with a, actually I think they used a decayed granite mulch around it. All of a sudden they had seedlings coming up everywhere. That bed grew and thrived and expanded. So with native plants, you still want to mulch them. But you may want to use something, you know, like one of the uh, native rocks uh, as something that will be much better than necessarily an organic mulch. What about live oak? Okay, most plants uh, that we have in this area are happiest, including live oaks, with an organic mulch on the surface of the soil. The best mulches that you can use are going to be mulches that came from the area that you're doing your landscaping. Because a mulch is pretty much going to be ground up tree parts. It's going to be leaves and stems. You're getting a lot of nitrogen in there from the proteins that are in the cambium and, and the leaves and things. You're getting a lot of carbon from the xylem tissue. Uh, and you're getting things that were part of the plants that grew in that area. Do you want pine bark? No, pine bark comes from East Texas. Save pine bark for your pine trees. Pine bark is virtually pure carbon. You want something that's a nice mixture of nitrogen, carbon, and other things. Um, pine bark is full of things called phenols and turpins and some nasty chemicals that are okay for pine trees but not very good for live oaks. So wherever possible, choose a mulch that came from your area. 
and just ground up tree trimmings and things like that, those are fine as a mulch. Think about what Mother Nature does with tree roots. There are a lot of minerals down fairly deep in the ground that many plant roots would never get to. A tree takes those minerals up, takes it up with the water going up through the xylem, and it incorporates it in making leaves and stems and all the stuff and flowers in some cases, all the things that are on the top of the tree. Then the appropriate season comes along and all the leaves fall off. Isn't that mar remarkable? Mother Nature has taken minerals that were 10 feet underground and put them on top of the ground. So what do we do? We go rake the leaves and haul them off and throw them away. Uh, but, and that's again why you should leave your leaves, why you should leave your grass clippings, things like that. Chop them up. But uh, someday I'll print and give you the wonderful thing about the discussion between God and St. Peter, you know, asking about, he's, he's looking at life on earth and he's saying, what happened to all my beautiful plants? Now it's nothing but green logs. And it goes through all this stuff of, you know, why people are hauling all this stuff off and then buying mulch to put back on the surface. Anyway, your best mulches are made of ground up native materials. Now if you looked at the profile of the forest floor, up on top you'd have the recently fallen material, underneath you'd have things that were partially decomposed. When you got down a little bit lower, you'd have things that were well decomposed, things that we would call compost at this point, and then you'd have mineral soil underneath. <coughs> so if you're just using ground up tree trimmings in effect, uh, you've lost that all that microbial life that comes with the largely decomposed material. If you take your, your native ground materials and then add compost to them. You're bringing in nutrients and more, most importantly, you're bringing in microbial life, beneficial bacteria, beneficial fungi, some of the good protozoans, sometimes beneficial nematodes. So a living mulch is by far the best mulch that you can put on the surface of the ground around your plants. The best mulch that we've ever been able to find in a bag is that stuff right there. It's called Sylvan Mulch by Ladybug. And if you're going to buy mulch in a bag, that's far superior to anything else that we have found. But now let's back up for a second. Maybe you've got a lot of mulching you need to do and you simply can't afford to buy that many bags or to buy it in bulk or whatever else. And you want to go out to the brush dump and get all your free mulch out there. Is that okay? Sure it's okay. But if you want to make that mulch much better, turn it into a living mulch by mixing compost with it. It'll be 20 times better. Put maybe one part compost to maybe five or six parts of your ground material, and you will end up with a good mulch. Not quite that good, but pretty darn good. If you're getting free material, there are two good sources of free ground material. One of them is your friendly neighborhood tree trimmer that tows that big tree either behind his truck. If he's going to get rid of his chippings, whether it's at New Earth or Gardenville or wherever, he actually has to pay them to dump this material out that they're going to then turn into mulch. Does he want to go out and pay them for it and drive 40 miles? No. If he's working three doors away from you, he would love to dump that pile of tree trimmings in your driveway. And that's a great source of free mulch, you know, if you'll use it appropriately. Can you go out the Bitters Road brush dump? Sure. You can go out there and get mulch. Some of it's free, some of it you pay a little bit for. But the one precaution that I would tell you is if you're getting mulch and you don't know the source, wear rubber gloves when you spread it. We had a lady in the nursery one day that from here to here was pink blisters. She found out the hard way that somebody had ground up a whole bunch of poison ivy in the mulch they had out there. Had gotten down and had done this spreading and had a real good time for a little while. So wear rubber gloves if you don't know where the mulch came from because you don't know what went into it. Will they dump? Will they put a scoop in there to get? Uh, I don't. I don't deal with the one here, up in Kendall County. They'll load it for you. Oh yeah, you drive up with your trailer and you tip the guy five bucks and he'll load as much as you want. And you but don't want it if it's diseased. That doesn't make any difference. The diseases, the oak wilt, and things like that, those spores are totally inactivated. You know, five minutes after they're chipped up. Once they dry out, there's you don't have to worry about disease. We put down that mulch one day, and about two weeks later, all these seeds came up. And another thing about mulch, if you're making your own or whatever else, a lot of people say, oh, that stuff's yucky. It's got all that white stuff growing out through the middle of it. 